So that's the prelude. And if you've heard, I mean, I assume most people have heard at least one other suite. This one really deviates from the norm, um, obviously with the beginning, which can be played in different ways. But I, I'm playing it in a, in a bit freer, a little bit more French overture, they call it, uh, way. Um, and then there's obviously this fugal part, which is, as most people know already, the only uh, suite that has either of those features. Um, it's, a, it's such a monster. Yeah, <laughs> in more ways than one. <laughs> so um, maybe, maybe you have some, there's so many things one could talk about with this suite. But I, I think for me, one of the things that came up, I'm not, no scholar, um, but I've been <laughs> fortunate enough to, to interact with some over the years, and is this Baroque idea of affect and, and the character, um, the, the key of C minor being very significant. Uh, with that, and then he accentuates all of that with this um, tuning down. Um, but you know, we, I think we think of Bach as being this household name now. I mean, of course he is. But this was really innovative at the time, and I think it's easy to lose sight of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you talk about the difference between playing the Bach suites on a broke cello versus a modern cello? Yes. So today I have a little bit of a hybrid. Um, I'm trying something out here. I have a Baroque bow and a modern cello. So I'm using an end pin. <laughs> um, I have done it in the past on a, Baroque, a purely Baroque instrument. I just like this particular cello better. It's, cellos tend to be expensive. <laughs> and <laughs> so there's, there's that aspect. Um, but um, the bow, especially with this suite, I've tried it on both. And maybe it'll be more apparent in the next movement, but in the Alamand. But there's a lot of this light, separate bows um, written into the suite, which I'm choosing to sort of double dot and do French overture for a lot of them. And I found it quite hard to get the effect I wanted what on my modern you? bow. For if anybody's tuning in that hasn't already seen this, you can sort of see the difference, especially at the tip here. Um, and it's obviously curved the completely opposite way. Um, and the frog is different. The modern bow is fantastic for playing Beethoven and Schubert and Tchaikovsky. <laughs> but the, the Baroque bow, it's not nearly as powerful, but it's a lot more nimble. It's a lot more agile. It can make sudden changes in articulation or dynamic much more easily. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about how maybe using your Baroque bow may have informed your approach to how you play these? Yeah, so specifically in this suite in particular, um, one can play it, it's written as 16th, so you can play. much in, more squarer. I'm sort of choosing to make them fast and late. And I thought that this bow 
does that better. There's this whole other can of worms, which I'm not sure if you want to get go into, ahead, but go ahead. which we're, is we're about, about the that. difference between the bowing and the phrasing. I mean, is there a difference? Mm. Um, yeah, chicken and egg, right? You know, and, and I think the equipment is very much a part of that. I mean, I, I don't know that you can say this is the Boeing and it works on any equipment, even two cellists, you know, in the same stand right. partners playing the same Boeing, they don't always sound the same. It depends on the way that you do it, the part of the bow you're in, and stuff like that. Right, um, right. Yeah. And has the bow changed your concept of, of sound on, on how you approach that? Sure. Um, this bow doesn't really bounce, per se. Hmm. The tip is a lot lighter feeling than the, the modern bow. Um, the modern one is great for sustaining. I mean, you can, obviously, crescendo, and I was, you know. You can still crescendo on down bows. And, um, but has it changed my concept? Yeah, it's a, it's a thinner sound, and there tends to be more decay. Hmm. Whereas, I think one can do, you know, I've heard wonderful performances with modern equipment um, last week. Yeah, as a matter <laughs> um, of fact. Yeah. But you have to kind of fidget with it a bit more mm -hmm, to, get mm -hmm. it, to get the effects you want. Mm. Yeah.